Villager. Villager is the playable avatar in the extremely popular Animal Crossing franchise. For those who want a break from the usual over-the-top action of modern video games, with some quiet time to just sit down and water your crops. In Smash Ultimate, Villager plays very differently from your traditional Smash character, playing more like a disruptive zoner. His side special, Lloyd Rocket, provides a constant hitbox that forces players to play around it, often right into the path of his forward air and back air, which he can use to effectively zone out opponents and prevent them from approaching at all. Pocket allows him to completely nullify attempts to zone him out by pocketing projectiles for his own use, which, depending on the projectile or item, can inhibit the opponent's ability to use the move again. Down Smash is able to bury opponents, which he can use to pop them up into the fireworks of his up smash for a kill confirm. Even Down Tilt has surprisingly high knockback for a little bit of gardening. His ledge game is exceptional with his bowling ball side smash making it next to impossible to climb up the stage directly, and his tree offers even stronger killing power. If you do find yourself off the ledge, Villager won't have any trouble getting back to the stage either with his exceptional recovery. Villager has a high learning curve due to being such a departure from the usual smash archetype, but for those who take the time to master him, we'll find a monster of a zoner and edge guarder. So take out your axe and make your opponents run for their very lives with the Villager. Isabel! Isabel made her debut in Animal Crossing New Leaf and is the assistant and secretary of the town mayor, where she helps out wherever she can. In Smash Ultimate, she's just as helpful at putting her fellow fighters to an early grave. She shares many of her characteristics with Villager, including the excellent recovery, projectile forward and back air, and pocket ability. However, aside from those, she plays very differently from Villager, being more trap-oriented as opposed to zoning. Lloyd Trap has her plant a Lloyd Rocket in the ground, which will rocket upwards if they detect any movement. They provide a useful stage control move, which enables Isabel to follow up with up air for a kill move if she's able to time the attack. Fishing Rod provides a simple yet terrifying means of literally fishing for a punish, as she can use it to grab opponents attempting to recover or reel her line back in for anyone who manages to get past it. She can also choose to throw the opponents in any direction she likes, KOing at high percents. While her jab provides a 50-50 mix-up into a tilt, grab, and even smash attacks. All these tools combined make her a monster at stage control, and will be a threat for anyone who dares underestimate her. So be sure to take notes on Isabel. Olimar is the little astronaut who crash-landed onto the GameCube in the title Pikmin in 2001, where he used the help of the native Pikmin to find parts of his ship. In Smash Ultimate, he has enlisted the help of the Pikmin once more, willing to put their bodies on the line to protect their commander. Olimar can have at least three Pikmin out at a time, which you'll want to do as he requires them for the majority of his attacks. Each Pikmin have different properties that affect Olimar's attacks, rotating with each use. Blue Pikmin are your default Pikmin, dealing regular base damage but boosting the damage and power of his throws, turning up throw into a kill throw. Red and yellow Pikmin are your offensive Pikmin, red dealing burn damage and yellow dealing electrical. White Pikmin are your utility Pikmin, increasing Olimar's grab range and toss range as well as dealing the most damage when latched on to an opponent. Purple Pikmin are the only Pikmin to cause knockback on Pikmin Toss, at the cost of reduced range. Pikmin Toss will be a crucial component of Olimar's moveset, dealing residual damage whilst keeping his opponents distracted from his next attack, which could range from his powerful smash attacks including Up Smash, a combo tool that at low percentages combos into Up Air, and up smash, because why not? Forward air and back air are your primary spacing tools, 
whistle, grant temporary armor to escape disadvantage, and cause any Pikmin back. Nair, dash attack, and down tilt can be used when you no longer have your Pikmin to help out. And don't forget to send them to their deaths so they don't weigh down the winged Pikmin when you're trying to recover. Olimar will quite literally live or die by his Pikmin, as his primarily zoning focused playstyle relies on it. Players will want to take advantage of the ambiguous nature of his attacks and overwhelm their foes with his minions. So let's hop aboard the Olimar Pain Train. Ice Climbers! Taking a break from their climbing escapades, which began in the original Ice Climber on the NES, the Ice Climbers have returned from their hiatus from Brawl to fight and smash Ultimate. They rely on their synchronized attacks to deal a hefty amount of damage and desynchronized attacks for setups, letting Popo and Nana perform different attacks simultaneously, paving the way for a plethora of unique combo paths. However, the technique requires a high level of technical mastery to execute. They can also use their partner climber to trump characters at the ledge, which make use of their beefy aerials to punish with an immense amount of power, and can continue to oppress their opponents at range with Ice Shot, making grounded approaches extremely difficult. Up close, Ice Climbers can use their disjointed ground attacks to keep their foes in check. They have a strong jab that discourages grabs, a multi-hitting up tilt that catches rolls, and combos freely into their highly damaging up air, a fast spinning approach option in the form of Squall Hammer, and Blizzard, which can freeze opponents completely at later percentages, letting you follow with a powerful Dabble Hammer strike from one of their smash attacks. Belay is a solid recovery that will allow both climbers to recover with no trouble. However, without their partner climber, their recovery game is severely nerfed. Ice Climbers requires a lot of technical skill and will become significantly weaker without their partner climber. But two fighters are always better than one. Mr. Game & Watch! Mr. Game & Watch is the embodiment of the entire Game & Watch line of handheld devices that were released between 1980 and 1991 by Nintendo. In Smash Ultimate, his moveset has received an overhaul both aesthetically and functionally. These include a new forward air, which acts as a potent pressure tool, protecting him from falls and sealing stocks. A new up air, which is very difficult to challenge, making it a great juggle tool that can set up for frame traps. His traditional moves have also been improved, with Nair being a more reliable combo tool, down air hitting harder and serving as a low risk edge guarder when paired with Game & Watch's up B, Fire, a move that is easily in the running for best out of shield option in the entire game, for its sheer speed, invincibility frames and versatility. And Chef, whose trajectory of flying pixelated food can be manipulated for better edge guards. Oil Panic is the only reflector that reflects and absorbs projectiles. If you absorb enough projectiles, you also gain access to Overload, an extremely dangerous two-frame attack that almost rivals the kill power of getting number 9 for his side special, Judge. A roulette-style attack with randomized effects and damage capabilities. Number 8 freezes, number 5 electrifies, number 7 spawns a bunch of apples, and number 1 just deals damage to yourself. It's all a gamble, which exemplifies Game & Watch's playstyle as a glass cannon who thrives on bombarding foes with disjointed attacks, bizarre projectiles, and a little dose of RNG. So be on watch for Mr. Game & Watch. Rawr! Often hailed as the catalyst that revitalized the video game industry after its crash in 1983, Rob was an accessory that accompanied the NES in 1985 and ended up playing a pivotal role in Nintendo's entry into the American market. Now I gotta be honest, I have no idea how to transition this to Smash. Um, uh. Rob is a zoner, with the capacity to anti-zone, thanks to Gyro providing a projectile that doubles as a wall protecting him from enemy projectiles and letting Rob shut down parts of the stage, 
making it a very dangerous ledge hazard to work around. You can even recharge it again after picking it up. Just make sure you're the one that's picking it up. Robobeam complements Gyro by providing a strong zoning tool that penetrates anything in its path and can be angled to catch enemies off guard. Look for the light on top of Rob's head to gauge the power of your beam because at full charge, Robobeam turns into Super Robobeam, a slower but much more powerful laser. Rob also has surprisingly good aerials with a fast forward air that can space opponents out, a disjointed nair that combos upon landing, a strong spiking down air, and a brutal up air that can kill quite easily off the top. His newly buffed side special arm rotor can take out foes off the side very early, and his down tilt is still as annoying as ever for shield poking. His down throw has also been adjusted to bury his opponents, forcing them to eat at least one of Rob's many follow-up attacks, such as up tilt, up air, or up smash. Rob is recommended for players who want an offset of a zoner, with guaranteed kill setups and flexibility in the air. So be wary of befriending this robot operating buddy. We hit trainer. As the name implies, Wii Fit Trainer was defined by the era of the Nintendo Wii through the introduction of an exercise accessory known as the Wii Fit, for which the trainer was your instructor. Her inclusion in Smash was an interesting choice, but in Smash Ultimate, she feels right at home. Wielding her various yoga equipment, Wii Fit Trainer is able to keep her foes at bay while setting up her own advantage state through deep breathing exercises. She thrives at ledge camping, with her entire toolkit built around her ability to pressure off stage. Hedda provides a flexible projectile that can be launched at different angles and can be cancelled so that the ball can be launched by other attacks. Sun Salutation is a fiery projectile that can be stored for later use, healing her for 2% with each release. Deep Breathing lets Wii Fit Trainer buff herself across the board, increasing her mobility, damage output, damage resistance, and even healing her a little, all basically for free. Even Hero still needs a little luck to even get a stat boosting spell. You can just imagine the amount of damage she can rack up when this is activated, as she can implement her three combo throws to convert into a quick aerials, up tilt serves as a combo tool on the ground, and the final hit of her jab buries her opponents, letting her secure stocks at high percents. Players will need to adjust for her quirks though, like forward air barely hitting in front of her, but able to spike behind her, and both side tilt and side smash having hitboxes on either side of her. They'll also need to account for the terrible reach of her normals, by making sure she hits hard when it counts. Either way, you'll be getting a workout mastering the Wii Fit Trainer. Developed for the NES in 1984 as a light gun shooter game, the Duck Hunt video game came and went, disappearing into obscurity as a bygone era of video games. But the era has been brought back to the modern day with the inclusion of Duck Hunt Dog as a playable fighter in Smash. Despite what it appears, the fighter is essentially three characters in one. The dog uses his canine attributes to grab his foes with his mouth, and summon the wild gunman to create pressure, provide cover for his setups, and directly convert into his throws. The duck, who rides atop the dog, makes up the majority of the fighter's normals, including his ground attacks, which are useful for keeping foes off your back, and aerials, which are used to extend combos. And then you have the hunter, who wields the NES zapper off-screen. He makes up Duck Hunt's smash attacks, and assists with many of his specials. These include Can, an explosive projectile that the hunter can help position to act as a stage hazard. Duck Hunt can either attack the Can directly to send flying at his foes, or set up a combo for a trick shot. The hunter also assists with clay shooting, one of Duck Hunt's best combo starters, where the dog throws a clay disc, 
which he can command the hunter to shoot at any time, allowing for plenty of follow-ups if it connects. Duck Hunt Dog can struggle to seal stocks, and relies heavily on a combination of zoning and setups. Players looking to pick up this fighter will have their skill and patience tested. So have your gun drawn and ready for the Duck Hunt Dog. Min Min. With a noodle for her right arm and a dragon for her left, Min Min is the Chinese martial artist from the arms fighting sports title. In Smash, the mechanics of arms have been faithfully transferred over to Min Min's playstyle, creating the most unique control scheme of any fighter, where the A and B buttons are usually designated to normal and special attacks. For Min Min, the A and B buttons simply represent each arm. A for her left arm and B for her right. Letting her throw out her massive arms at will, whether it's in the air, on the ground, at the same time, or while moving around. Becoming the focal point of her entire moveset, as she keeps her foes at bay with the extended reach from her arms. She's not completely devoid of specials though, as arms change lets her interchange between three different attachments for her right arm. Ram Ram is the quickest, most mobile arm attachment, providing the best defense against aerial approaches. Megawatt is the slow but beefy arm attachment that can take stocks with ease. And Dragon, a multi-purpose arm attachment that is also the default attachment for her left arm. Dragon shines when incorporated with Min Min's smash attacks, which are almost indistinguishable from her normals aside from having more range and damage. With Dragon attached, Min Min can fire an additional laser after the initial attack by holding the corresponding button. This can also be performed in the air, and anyone who doubts its power has clearly never been subjected to the humiliation of being edgeguarded while Min Min is three quarters the length of the stage. Each arm attachment becomes fired up the longer Min Min is able to hold a charge, with Ram Ram gaining a fire component, Megawatt gaining an electrical, and Dragon shooting a stronger laser. Dragon automatically gets this boost whenever Min Min performs a throw, which you'll want to do because Min Min's grab range is enormous. However, her arms only have hitboxes at the end of them, making a well-timed jump attack all that's needed to take down Min Min. So you want to make use of Min Min's more traditional attacks to circumvent this weakness. Like her jab, which can be performed by mashing the A button to keep foes off you. Down tilt for setting up combos. And up smash as an effective anti-air and the occasional reflector. Arms jump can be a fantastic tool for escaping shield pressure thanks to its initial invincibility frames and the ability to follow up with a dive kick from the air for a surprise attack. Min Min is truly terrifying for anyone who is within her crosshairs off stage, but can be easily overwhelmed by fighters who are able to get past her defenses. Min Min players will need to keep mixing things up so that their foes don't get too comfortable and know exactly when to turn up the heat as soon as they're off stage. So stretch yourself thin with Min Min. Steve! The default skin for the most successful sandbox video game of all time, Steve from the land of Minecraft has joined the fray in Smash Ultimate. With code having to be rewritten just to accommodate him, Steve literally breaks the conventions of Smash. His neutral B has three functions that serve as the core to his playstyle. Mining, crafting, and building. Steve can mine for materials on the ground, including wood, stone, iron, gold, and diamond. As you mine, these materials will accumulate in a gauge that appears above the player icon and will either appear at a predetermined rate on Battlefield and Omega stages, or based on the actual terrain of the stage itself. Steve can then use these resources to craft weapons using the crafting table that he can summon at will. He can craft weapons with wood, the weakest material, all the way up to diamond, the strongest, with each material upgrade increasing the damage, knockback and durability of his weapons with the exception of Gold, which increases his attack speed at the cost of durability. Steve can also use these resources to place blocks on and off the stage. 
These blocks can serve as stage hazards for your opponents, block off ledges for recovery attempts, protection while you mine or set traps, and pseudo stages for stalling, maneuvering, and attacking while in the air. When Steve is done playing Minecraft, he has plenty of tools to stay on the offensive too. His sword comprises of his jab, forward tilt, side smash, and nair. He can walk and jump freely as he swings. The same applies for his axe, which he uses for up tilt and up air, allowing him to rack up damage extremely quickly and efficiently. His pickaxe is the most damaging of his weapons, and are incorporated into his forward air and back air, with forward air able to spike effectively and back air being a strong KO tool. Putting aside his weapons, you have the rest of his inventory, including flint and steel for his down tilt, an effective edge guard that will remain active in the air and on shield, fishing rod, his grab, is one of the few long-ranged options he has, able to be followed with a potent forward throw, putting them in the perfect position to drop an anvil on them. Making up his down throw and down air, Steve can summon an anvil and choose to ride it down for more damage, or cancel to remain safe and even combo into other attacks. Minecart, his side special, is a whole different type of ride altogether. A devastating burst option on startup, Steve can freely ride the minecart on the ground so long as he has the materials, and set up powered rails with gold and redstone to re-engage the strong burst of speed and power. Jumping out mid-ride turns the minecart into a command grab, trapping opponents and even taking them straight to the blast zone if they're unable to mash out in time. TNT requires the most resources of all his tools, but is a lethal trap at the ledge, which can be set off with a trail of redstone and pressure plate for an explosive KO. Elytra, on the other hand, is one of the few tools that doesn't require any resources, granting Steve the power of flight and PTSD for anyone who had to deal with Brawl Meta Knight. Steve very much revolves around resource management. Nearly all of his attacks require materials in some way, and so players will need to find time mid-battle to mine for these resources, leaving him open if he's unable to do it safely. He has one of the strongest advantage states in the game, and the ability to upgrade his weapons to enhance his attack and kill power. But all these tools and upgrades doesn't mean anything if you can't get in on your opponent, as Steve doesn't have many options against ranged attacks, and lacks any of his own. You're gonna have to be crafty to survive and thrive with Minecraft Steve. Thank you for watching. These videos are made possible by our generous patrons. For $1 a month, you can gain early access to videos as well as your name listed here. Up next, we're charging our busters and spinning our dashes for some classic characters.